I think you're going to enjoy the following interview with a local Roswell accordion player. I'm excited, but I'm prejudiced towards accordion players. I want to thank Taqueria Jalisco for allowing us to do the interview on their patio. Their restaurant is one of my favorites to eat at in Roswell, and I will provide a review someday because I think that would be worthwhile. Their uh, restaurant is located on the corner of a major Roswell intersection. You will hear traffic sounds in this interview. And so if you hear the rumblings of Harleys going past, just consider it part of the um, atmosphere of the interview. <laughs> I'm going to provide a couple of links below. One to a song that um, the accordionista Fabian Anaya discusses in this interview. It's a song that he wrote and it's called uh, Alejete Mujer. And I really enjoy this video because it has a lot of Roswell flavor to it. Um, I believe that they filmed the nightclub scenes in Epic Nightclub and the uh, body of water looks to be Lake Van in Dexter, New Mexico, which is just a community right next to Roswell. So <laughs> enjoy the interview. I am interviewing Fabian Anaya today. He is a local accordion player. What band do you play with? I play with Malda. Okay. And how long has Maldad been together? Maldad got together in February of 1997, so 26 years. Oh my goodness, that's a long time. A long time. Yeah, um, but my first question for people that I interview is always, how did you end up in Roswell, New Mexico? It's a funny story. Okay. <laughs> um, I came to play with another band on a Saturday night. I spent the night and I never left. So honestly, I came to play audition for another band and I got hired and fired in the same night. And uh, the singer from that band, which was Pasión, he told me, you know what, um, just stay the weekend. If you stay the weekend, we'll figure something out. And in three days, we had a whole new band, which was Maldad. And, uh, How do you get hired and fired in one night? Or is that too personal? <laughs> no, what happened is the accordion player that he had, uh -huh. had quit him. Okay. So he comes all the way to Portales. I'm from Bledsoe, Texas, but we were okay. at a wedding. And he tells me, uh, do you still play accordion? I said, well, I'm learning. He's like, well, come to Roswell. I got a job for you. So when I got, when I played my first song, half the band said, you're hired. Oh. And then <laughs> the keyboard player said he didn't want me playing accordion because he was the accordion player. The, what, the keyboard player? Yes. And uh, he said, if you... Uh, if you get this guy, I'm out. And I'm like, I'm not that good, you know. I can't carry a band. So, you know what? I'll step away. And everything was good. So, um, so I got hired and fired in the same night. Oh. <laughs> but it was, all, it was all good because, I'm telling you, by Monday, we had a band. We had Maldad. Tuesday was our first practice, and we've never quit since. And where did you meet your band members? Well, funny you ask. The first one I met, his name was Lorenzo. Okay. I met him at a party that Saturday night. Like after all this shenanigans, after all this, this show and everything. Yes. We went to an after party and I met Lorenzo. And I asked him, do you play bajo sexto? He said, well, I play guitar and bass. I said, you want to learn bajo sexto? We learned it in about 10 minutes. I said, okay, you're good enough. Let's go. And then my drummer, he was 11 years old. He went to Mountain View Middle School. He was my cousin's little boy. Oh. And is he still in the band? He's still in the band. He plays bass now. His name's oh, Mikey. Wow. And uh, that guy, he uh, was playing his snare really loud and annoyingly on Sunday, the next day after that show. And I went in his room and I said, hey, can you play drums? He says, does it look like it? Rude little kid. <laughs> and so I asked his mom if he could play with us. And she said, as long as you take care of him, I don't care. 26 years later, we're still at, we're still at it. And the bass player, his name was Rich. We found him at Laprino. He was a guy. We went to do a balloon uh, singagram on that Monday. It's all crazy. It worked out like that. But on Monday, we went to do a balloonogram at Laprino, and uh, Rich was there. And I asked. He was a guy that I knew from when I was a little kid. I used to go to church with them. And they would, they would sing in a church band. 
with all his sisters and his dad and I would I was like are you playing bass he says yeah you want to play the band he goes well I'm not doing anything <laughs> so Tuesday we set up a practice nice and that rest is history how long have you been playing the accordion then actually I started the accordion when I was seven okay and then I only practiced it for like a couple of months because you know everyone's attention span is that long okay and then the man who had the accordion moved away from where I lived. So I didn't pick it up again until I was 17. What kind of accordion did you have when you were seven? What kind of I had a little Hanukkah. Oh, okay. It was a little 26 key. Oh. It, see, I play the <laughs> piano accordion. I don't play the button accordion. Oh, you play the piano accordion? Yes. Okay, so that's different. So, um, what, I, yeah. I, I, I was going to ask you what what brand of accordion you play now. And now I have a Gabinelli. I have okay. three of them. Okay. So I actually have four accordions. I have a Weltmeister. Okay. I have three Gabinellis. All right. And somewhere in the house I have a silver tone that was what I call my first accordion because that's the first one I used since I started Manda. Oh. And it got in a closet somewhere and I don't know where it's at. But... But they're piano accordions. Yes. Oh, all right. And what what keys are they? Well, that one there is uh, it's a 34 key. Okay. My big one. Okay. And then they're all named. If that's you want to hear that. Oh, all right. Um, the silver tone. Her name is Maggie. Okay. That's a black one. <laughs> and then I have a white one, and her name is Nellie. I have a blue 26 key, which is smaller. That one. Her name. Her name is Gabby. And now I have a black and red one, and her name is Rosie, in honor of my mom. So oh. My mom passed away, and oh. when I got the new accordion, I customized it for her. Why did you choose the piano accordion? In a nutshell? Yeah. Because it was easier. Because it was easier? <laughs> yeah, well, we grew up poor, and oh. so I couldn't afford a button accordion. Right. But I had little keyboards laying around everywhere. Right. So I would play the little keyboards, and then when I got the accordion, I just transposed it over. So. I see. Right. Mm -hmm. I play a button accordion. I have a Gabinelli. Oh, nice. And, yeah. And I am really just a student, so I'm just learning, and I think it's kind of difficult myself. <laughs> We're all just students. The thing well, about that, yes. that got me about the button, about the diatonic accordion, is that in is one key and out is another. Yes. <laughs> Tell me about it. <laughs> yeah. And on the piano accordion, well, it's all the same. Oh, okay. If your so even in tune, mm -hmm. anyway. Right. It's all the same. So even even with your Gabinellis, it, it, they're not they're not diatonics, then they're no, okay. no, okay, okay. No, they're they're keyboard accordions. So I, they I do have sure. registries. Okay. So the registers, what they do is they give you a fatter sound or a thinner okay. sound. Or, uh huh. My favorite is called the master switch. Yeah. It gives you a little bit of both. Right. But if you're doing something like a bolero, which is something really slow, romantic, pretty song, uh -huh. you want to go more with uh, maybe an oboe oh. and if, or a violin. And then if you're going to go more hardcore, more conjunto, which is what we like to play, the uh -huh. drinking music, right? then you play the master switch or the bassoon. Right. Yeah, uh, I have three registers on mine. The the master, the clarinet, and the... Um, and the violin. <laughs> the violin. Yeah. yeah. One of mine has five registers. Oh. It's yeah. It's crazy. It's the oboe, the bassoon, the master, the violin, and the clarinet. They get heavier when you get more registers. Yes, because there's more reeds inside. So. Right. I mean, I know that there these the, that style of accordion is usually smaller, so they're not. Well, the diatonics are. Oh, oh my gosh. Oh, is Mine yours is big? Oh, yours Mine is a monster. Is, well, it's little. <laughs> it's small, but it's like this. So oh. Mine, it probably weighs 30 pounds. Oh, yeah. You know? So I'm glad that I have a... Yeah, and we a, average five-hour shows, so that's why I got muscles. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Oh, boy. Yeah, I usually sit down when I play for that reason, and mine's only 14 pounds. <laughs> Well, if we sit down and play, people laugh at you. So oh, you have do to they? be energetic. You have oh. to have a show. You have to be oh. out there dancing. And, um, <laughs> ever since we started, that's what we've done. So thank God that Rosal's helped us. We're spoiled here. You know, there's there's not a there's not really a band that plays our style of music. Oh, so we're spoiled. Uh -huh. 
you know, when they want a wedding, a quinceanera, and they want to focus on that kind of music, well, they call us, so nice. thank God for that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But you dance while you're playing. All the time. All the nice. time. We jump, we dance. When I was young and thin, we used to jump up on tables and do back bends and pyros. And <laughs> it was crazy back then. I tried that a while back at my niece's quinceanera, and I couldn't get back up. Oh. So, <laughs> I don't I'm know. Old. Yeah. Oh boy. Yeah, so, um, we just actually just got back the day before yesterday from the Tejano Music Awards fanfare. Oh, nice. Yeah, we we got to go and play there. Um, we were supposed to play three times, and we got I'd say fan favorites. We ended up playing seven times. So while we were there, they were calling us, "Come do this." Come do that. It was awesome. Um, there was about maybe a hundred thousand people there. It was awesome. I have been to one, I have never been to that, but I went to years and years ago, I went to a Conjunto festival and saw Flaco Jimenez play and he danced around and he was an old guy. For, yes. Even though it was years ago, he was still an old guy he's just a dancing skinny around. Old guy, though. Yeah. Well, yeah, that's true. That's why he's he Flaco, I assume. <laughs> he actually performed uh, this past weekend. He did. He's in his 80s now. Uh, yeah. And he still, he still puts on He's still show. going. Mm -hmm. Nice. That's the way I want to be when I'm in my 80s. My favorite accordion player is Ramon Ayala. Oh, well, uh, yeah. He's the best. We actually, he's doing his farewell tour this year, so I've got to go get a show with him. But um, when I was little, that's all my uncles listened to was Ramon oh. Ayala. That's it. I, when I moved to Roswell, I didn't know who James Brown was. I didn't know who, you know, bands like Earth, Wind & Fire. And I didn't know any of that. So people make fun of me because a song will come on the radio and they'll be like, you've heard this song, right? I'm like, no. <laughs> They're like, but you play music. It's because all I listened to was Ramon Ayala. That's it. Just Ramon Ayala. And that's what I wanted to do when I grew up. Oh. The day I got on stage that night that I got hired and fired, I heard the crowd. I played a song called Tragos Amargos. Yeah. And I, I saw what the crowd, how they reacted. And I said, this is what I'm going to do the rest of my life. Oh. And so, yeah, I've... I've done a lot of things, but this is probably my favorite thing to do. Tragos and Maragos is, I think, literally the first song I ever learned to play on the accordion. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah, so, well, see, that's the drinking anthem. That's the that's the uh, Sweet Caroline of Spanish <laughs> music. Doesn't matter what dance you're at, doesn't matter what event you're at, if that song comes on, people will go crazy, so. I saw Ramona Yala in concert once, a long time ago. Was it when he came here? No, I didn't live in Roswell at that time. Um, I saw him at Isleta. Oh, okay. Isleta. Yeah, I think that so. Dude, that guy is awesome. He's amazing. Uh, just this, the, the, how technical he is. Right. A lot of people don't realize that when you play the button accordion, uh -huh. most people, I call it cheating, uh -huh. most people play with two fingers. Oh. You know, they'll run their scales with one finger. They'll... Ramon Ayala does that with three and four and five fingers. Right. You know, they're full chords when he's doing his runs. Uh -huh. That's what I strive to do, but I never got to do it. <laughs> I've tried and tried and tried, so now I use the bassoon sound, so it helps me with a couple more reads. Oh, okay. So we're not going to say that, that we cheat, though, okay? Oh. We're not going to say that. Okay. But well, there's... if there's any way to cheat, then I try to find it because... Yeah. Well, there's lots of tricks to the there, trade. There are... Some of the chords are just impossible from the length of my fingers. <laughs> well, like, I don't know how you're... That's what I'm saying. <laughs> like, no way. Yeah. Some of them are hard, especially on the button accordion. Like, a lot of people say that there's there's only E, B flat, F. Um, every tono is in every accordion. Oh, uh, it's just, right, uh, right, right. Well, you got to practice it. Um, now in my older years, I've gotten away from practice a little bit, which is a shame to say, but we're so busy. But thank God we've been playing the same music for 30 years, so we got those songs down a little bit. Oh, <laughs> well someday, I, I haven't been playing that long, so maybe someday I can say that I, I have all the songs down that I want to learn. <laughs> well, the thing is... Play what you want to play, not mm -hmm. what people want you to play. Oh, no, I play what I want to play. If you're, if you're happy Definitely. and you're on stage and you're uh -huh. projecting that happiness, oh. your crowd's going to be happy. I don't think I'm ever going to be on stage, but... Well, we'll invite you next time. <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> you can play Tragos Amargos, they'll go nuts. <laughs> oh, uh, yeah, speaking of stage fright, you said that you have it sometimes, is that 
correct? Well, it's an antsy feeling. I get that. Uh -huh. It's like an athlete. You know, oh. right before the game, you get the right. pregame jitters. That happens to me every gig. It doesn't matter if it's a small quince or a giant concert or I get the same jitters. Like, I get this uh, anxiety inside. And, it, you know, of course, I have a lot of, I'd say, responsibility mm -hmm. because I am the front man and I have to take make sure my guys are okay and make sure. But inside, I feel this, uh, it's like a little anxiety I feel inside. Mm -hmm. Once that first song hits, it's over. I have a great time on stage. Oh. I tell my wife, I tell my kids, the day I get on stage and I don't have fun, I quit. I'm retiring. But that hasn't happened yet. It's been 26 years and I love it. Oh, well, some people are just born to be performers. Yeah, I think I just like the accordion, so I play it in my living room at home. <laughs> and That's awesome. I, I was trying to get over my performance anxiety by playing like little clips on my vlog. But it's kind of hard. Like, I, it's hard to for me to convince myself that I'm not actually playing for a camera. <laughs> well, the thing is, if I can give you some advice, uh huh, you're you are playing for those people. Uh -huh. But you got to realize that an old man told me this one time. He said, "There's going to be people that love you, and there's going to be people that 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 don't love you." Right. You got to play because you love to play. Right. And if you project that on your people. They have to accept you. And, you know, thank God, here in Roswell, we got a lot of practice in Roswell with our crowd, with our fans, with our families, with our people. So when I do get up on stage, I picture my family, my kids, because they're your biggest fans. Right. You, you can play a song horrendously, and they'll tell you it was awesome. As long as you know that you're doing your best, you'll get better. It's when you get comfortable. When you get comfortable it's over because right. you're not going to challenge yourself anymore. Right. So if that stage fright is getting to you, just, you know, picture your husband or in his underwear. And play. <laughs> I promise it works. You know, it works um, because you love to do it. If you love to do it, you're going to do it. Well, I love to listen to the accordion and I do love to play, but I'm, I'm just not there yet. Where but have I... you ever felt the feeling of when you do get the song? And it sounds like Ramon Ayala. Oh, you, you will, say, yes, yes, oh yes. Oh my yes. gosh, I just did that. Yes. Okay, my, off that. Yeah, my goal song right now is Polka Idalia. <laughs> I guess it's played really fast. And every time I think that I've got the tempo down, I'm like, I try to play it to, to the. That's the when you wish you had the old 45s, you could slow it I'm down. I'm like, oh. Yes. <laughs> I have a DJ program and I slow it down so I can learn it. Yes, I do the same thing. Um, Polka Idalia is a really hard song. Uh, it's it's very very satisfying once you get it though. Right. Um, my favorite is El Ator Conico. Okay. And that cool, that little that little polka is awesome. It's my break song at the end of every song, but it's because oh. the, it's the only polka I ever learned. Oh okay. And so I'm trying to expand a little bit, learn some more polkas, more. But like I said, our thing we stick to our bread and butter. We stick to our bread and butter. We play cumbias, we play rancheras, we play a little bit of country. We play, uh, we play lots and lots and lots of Ramon Ayala. Okay. And that is what sets us aside from everybody in Rawls. So we're going to keep continue to do it. Hopefully people keep drinking. Hopefully people keep dancing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and, exactly. And it's job security. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of my friends have tried new ventures and then they get tired of them and they don't want to play anymore. That makes me sad because we have so many talented musicians here. Stick to your bread and butter, have fun, enjoy it, and don't try to please everybody. No. Do what you love, and if you're having fun and you're excited and you're uh, you're enjoying yourself, your crowd will enjoy themselves. Right. You know. Right. So everything takes care of itself when when it comes to music. So other than Ramon Ayala, who are your favorite accordion players? Ooh, I got a million of them. <laughs> Oh, well, um, give me a couple. Juan Villarreal from okay. Los Cachorros. Okay. Um, I love the guy from Los Arcos. Okay. Um, I love Michael Salgado, Albert Zamora, Jaime from, now he's Jaime de Anda, but he used to be Jaime Los Chamacos. Um, everyone. I mean, the thing about it is, I think anybody who has the guts to get on stage should be praised. Oh, right. And so I don't really have an accordion player. I'm like, I don't like him. He doesn't play good. 
because everybody has their qualities. Well, I mean, I have my favorites. But th those guys are people yeah. I would pay money right. to go and just sit on a right. sit at Taqueria Jalisco and watch them play. That's yeah. what I would, I would. How many have you seen live? All of them. Oh, you've seen them all. Yeah. Yeah, the only one that I have yet to see is Steve. Well, I mean, even Steve Jordan. We played with Steve Jordan. So Esteban Jordan is a pioneer. Mm-hmm. He was back in the 60s. He used to right. play here at the Tower Bar. Oh. And here in Roswell? Yeah. Oh, yeah. wow. He's from <laughs> down south, but he used to come here all the time. And uh, he's, he's up in age now, like Flaco Jimenez, all mm -hmm. that. But that guy was doing stuff like a wah-wah pedal on his accordion. He was doing special effects on his accordion back in the 80s when no one was doing it. Right. And so if you come down to those things... Um, the only one I have not seen yet that I want to see is Ricky Munoz from Intocable. Oh, I every time, every time they come, I want to go and then I can't go. Same here. And so we've been so booked, yeah. busy, you know, being booked and stuff that we never make it to an Intocable. I concert. really want to see him as well. He is just one of my when I first started listening to this music, he was one of my favorites, you know, yes. first favorites. <laughs> that guy and you know, I really to be honest I enjoyed him more when he first started than mm -hmm. now. Oh, yeah, same. But, I mean, he's kind of, he's one of those creative types who explores, yes. so he doesn't yes. stick to one genre. But, he, like, he some piece. of the old songs from the early 90s are the best, in my yes. opinion, of his. Yeah. Yes, that, it, they, they started something that no one's been able to, to do. So their style, their genre, is their own. Right. And that's amazing to me. Yeah, it kind of... It, it, I I feel like when I listen to uh, more recent music that they have had a, a big influence on the genre. Like, he, they changed it, changed the sounds. Yeah, well, we have, like, now, back in the day when I started, we had Tejano, mm -hmm. Conjunto, right. and Norteño. Right. And now you have Norteño bands playing some Tejano right. riffs. And well, and to me, it used to be really obvious the difference between a Tejano and Norteño. But now it, there's a lot of crossover. It's become a melting pot. Right. So, yeah. So now everybody calls that progressive Norteño. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, no, it's it's Tejano with the sax. Uh, okay. You know? um, but... You know, whatever, it's, it's because our, our new generation, we need more roots. That's the honest truth. You know, my kids don't listen to what I listen to. And I don't play it like my uncles did. You know, my uncles working on the car, they're outside doing something. That Ramon Ayala is in your ear. In your oh, uh-huh. Now, our kids have MP3 players, they have right. iPods, they have... So, they're listening to their own stuff. Right. You know, there's not a, a there's no there's no roots. Well, I found that um, you know, my son is my youngest child. I have you know daughters too, but they're they're older. My son is my youngest, and he grew up listening to um, the this style of music, and he didn't like it for a long time. But now he does like a lot of it. But it's it's bands like Grupo Frontera it, that really appeal to some of the younger crowd. Well, I've learned that too. Playing accordion mm -hmm. is. For our children nowadays, it's very visual. Mm -hmm. It's not really audible. Okay. So, what's on YouTube, right. what they see in their face every right. single day, but they don't realize that half of those songs that they're playing, we were playing in 1988. Oh, yeah. You know? Yeah, just when I think that this is the original band, that exactly. the song original, I'm like, exactly. did that I hear it earlier? I'm like, okay. <laughs> when I hear something, you know, when, when Malda started, we used to play all that, the slow cumbias, the okay, and people would, people would literally tell us, "Don't play that. It does not hit. It's not gonna work. No good. We need upbeat. We need fast. We need movida." We're, okay, we stuck to that slow stuff. Oh, like more now, like the romantic cumbias is no, that what you're talking about? Like, let's say for example, I don't know if you listen to this, but you listen to Secreto. Oh yeah. Okay, Secreto has a song called. Um, Le falta un beso. Okay? That song, we were playing it in 1999. Okay. <laughs> and they were like, it's too slow. No. Well, 25 years later, everything is slow again. 
it's all repeating itself again. All those songs that we threw away in the band room, we're digging them out and saying, let's play this again. Because the kids nowadays are hearing the fronteras and they're hearing Los Igualados and they're listening to, uh, you know, Secreto and they're listening to all these bands. De Parranda. All those bands are playing what we grew up with and it's awesome. But our kids now see it on YouTube. Mm -hmm. They see if a song has a million likes, it's good. Right. When we were a kid, if a song had a million likes, you still had to hear it, listen to it, can you dance to it, is it good? We don't have that anymore. Right. So now it's a popularity contest. Well, so, that's true. Although I would say that um, the high school kids these days do a lot of sharing on Spotify as well. Exactly. Yeah. And that's the thing. You, If you uh, push yourself, mm -hmm. you can make it. You can do anything you want. Right. In the 90s, that wasn't the case. In the 90s, you had to make a cassette. Which oh, took yeah. Effort, <laughs> effort, effort. There's no effort now. Now I could, I can get on YouTube today with you. Mm -hmm. Right. You know, in the 90s, it cost me seven thousand dollars to get a TV spot or a oh right. An I interview. know. I you know. know. That's what I love about technology. It, yeah, I know. And honestly, <laughs> um, that's why I'm on YouTube in the first place is to try to sell my books. Sure. Um, because that's really what I do. That's probably why I'll never get on stage because <laughs> we'll get on stage for you. I'm the person who sits in the background. I don't. <laughs> and you know, and that's awesome because people who didn't think they could now can. Right. And so as far as accordion playing goes, the more you play, the more you play, the more you play, the more you yeah. earn. Yeah. You know, so you hear bands out there that say, oh, we're never going to make it because we've never gotten seen. It just takes a little effort. Get you a phone. Right. Put your music on YouTube and right. push it. You know? But some of us old guys, man, we're, we've been, we've been carried and babied and pampered, <laughs> you know? So we, we think it's... We don't do phones. Yeah, we do. We just don't. Oh, yeah. I do everything on yeah, my phone. I just, write my books on this phone. I take these videos on this phone. Some of us this are just old is, school. Yeah. And we don't believe in that. Oh. We call it hype. Oh. We call it, hey, we have to earn your spot on the totem pole. And it's not true anymore. Mm -hmm. Now you just got to advertise yourself. Push yourself. Make yourself seen. You do that, and I promise you, you will get on YouTube. You will get likes. Mm -hmm. You will get bookings. You will get everything that you wanted. You'll get it if you hustle. <laughs> and so Malda's been hustling for 26 years. 26 God. years. And I don't think we're going to stop until I can't dance anymore on stage. What is the most difficult song you conquered when you were learning to play? My own song. Your own song. It's a okay. song called Alejate Mujer. Mm -hmm. The accordion part was extremely difficult for me, even though it's a simple song. Oh, uh -huh. But it's in a key that I never play in. Oh. And so when we got into the studio and we started to play with it, I was like, I could not get it. It took me like, like La Bamba. It was 60 takes. Oh. <laughs> and uh, finally I got it. And once I got it, I'm like, that song is the one that I had so much trouble with. And, but it came out and it was really nice to me. I was really pretty. Um, Mi Tesoro is another one. It's a, it's a bolero. Boleros are always hard, but Mi Tesoro was a tough one for me. But I've never found one that we play, that we actually play, that was really tough for me. Um, because the most thing for me is I don't try to copy anyone. So I try to, I get the, the essence of the song, mm -hmm. and then we try to put our own spin on it. Okay. So we try to simplify a lot of that music. So how many albums have you cut? Five. Five. Are they available? They're available. Every, yes. Remember, we have technology now. Um, we have three right now that we've actually pushed. Mm -hmm. One, the first one was in 1999. It was called Por Ti. Okay. The second one was a live CD we did in Lubbock, Texas at Crystal's. That one a lot of people don't have. Uh, the third one was a CD I also I made also like I said it was a Garage Days type deal. Oh right. And uh, we made it. We put a bunch of songs live on a CD and we released it. And then we went to Alta Vista Records 
that's in uh, Albuquerque uh -huh. with Herman, and we recorded the Malay Traicionera CD. That one did really good for us. It sold like 2,000, 3,000 copies here in Austin. If somebody wanted to buy those albums, where would they go to find them? They would have to hit me up on Facebook or oh. Snapchat <laughs> because we're out completely. Oh. We don't put them in stores anymore. There is no place for CDs. Right. No, I, I hear you on that. So, it's and really my thing the is, I'm up. one of those old school guys that don't believe in Spotify and so. I'll upload a song once in a while, mm -hmm. but I'll never upload an album. On Spotify? No. The thing for me is, if you upload a whole album at once, well, they've heard everything you've got to show. I see. Uh -huh. I do one single, and I'll play it for six months. See how it goes. And every six months, I'll upload another song. Right. You know? So, uh, we do have a new CD out. It's called uh, Unas Pa Mi Raza. Mm -hmm. And when my mom passed away... I decided I'm going to make a CD for all my tios, my cousins, my mom, my sister, my mother-in-law, all these people that have had an influence on me throughout the years. And so what we did was we made an album with all their favorite songs. So we have on there Te Prometido, that's my mother-in-law song. Uh, Wasted Days and Wasted Nights, it's an oh. old Freddie Fender song. Oh yeah, no, I know that song. <laughs> that one was for my, my, for my father-in-law. We had another one called Hay Unos Ojos, that was for my uncle. Oh, yeah. Um, there's lots of them, you know. And so, we have these songs, and that's the compilation that we wanted to do. Well, coming up, I've got a couple of new singles that we're going to release, but we're going to release them just like that. Like okay. Frontera does, we're going to do just a single. And then we'll probably collab with somebody and release that one. You know, because... Uh, we want people to we want people to take the CD and listen to it, not just put it in their glove compartment. Oh, right. You know. Well, I know with with um, Spotify because I've moved that direction as well. Uh, I used to collect CDs, and now I if I can find it, those entire albums on Spotify, I will listen to them because I miss the days of albums because albums are an art. They're exactly. they're kind of a lost art now, like putting songs together. And you know, we thought about doing that. Um, when we do our recordings, we actually get CDs. Okay. So our CDs, what I do is I do a, like a pre-sale order because I know I'm going to get that amount of CDs. And we sell those to all our friends and family so they'll have one first. Then we sell the, the singles. Okay. So we actually started using USB drives because they're more convenient. My own car doesn't even have a CD player. Oh, But yeah. it has a USB drive. Yeah. A so lot of cars don't anymore. We just transfer our music to the USB drives, and then uh -huh. you get best of all. You can take two songs off each album, put them on there, mm -hmm. and they have a little bit of everything. Right. So it's an easier selling point for me. Okay. <sighs> Sorry, my brain just <laughs> my brain just sort of drifted off there for a second. If do you have a link that you would like me to leave in the description? A link I where people can. I actually don't. You um, don't. You can you can use our Snapchat. I don't even know what my Snapchat is. Let me. Oh. Look. <laughs> I'm supposed to be on all the social media, and I I'm being sort of dragged it's back. No problem. To social media, so I can market myself better. Okay. For my books, and I really don't like it. So if I had a Snapchat, I wouldn't know what it was either. Is this gonna be on? Like, is this gonna be? on YouTube? It will be on YouTube. I don't have a very big audience, but that's what I'm working on growing. It's just because I don't know if you can see that. Oh, okay. Yeah, and probably they can... That's our Snapchat. Okay. Just add us to that. Okay. We also have... I'll give you another one. We have an Instagram also. Okay. And the Instagram, that's where you can contact us for bookings and okay. things like that. Find it. How far away do you go for bookings? We went to Immokalee, Florida. You did? Mm -hmm. Wow. We've been to Mexico. We've been we've been everywhere. We'll go as far as you need us to go. And that's not a lie. We'll go anywhere. We just went to San Antonio. Like I said, we just got back like three days ago. Two days I ago. love San Antonio. San Antonio is amazing. Yeah. That's where I went to that Conjunto Festival. <laughs> Oh, okay. The one that I went to Was it Rosedale Park or where did you go? I think so. It was at a park. I 
I honestly don't remember because it was years and years ago. Oh, okay. It's hard to believe, but my son is 17 and he wasn't even born yet. I mean, he wasn't, yeah. Yeah, there it is. Yeah, it's just hard to believe how time passes. Okay, cool. <laughs> yeah, and you can actually just do the ads at the bottom. You don't have to do the whole QR code. Okay. But, yes, ma'am. Uh, and this is our, this is my catchphrase. Are you ready? Okay, yes. No, you might not want to see it. Why not? You'll see. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, <laughs> the whole effing show. <laughs> oh, that's funny. <laughs> we put out probably a thousand of those posters this year. This oh, nice. At Fanfare. It was awesome. So, yeah. Um, I love the accordion. I really do like... Oh, yeah. I'm I, one of those people. I don't care yeah. if I hear one. Like, we went to Mexico for a gig, and we're walking around in the Mercado, mm -hmm. and there's music everywhere. Right. Anywhere there was an accordion, I would stop listen for 10 15 minutes yeah and my wife's like we have shopping we'll go shopping i'm watching music right and i'm just one of those people i hear you love it i that was that that's really why i got hooked on this music in the first place was uh Makes listening you feel to the, something huh? yeah it does. it does like i yeah i can't even explain it that's why i have to learn to play because we, i can't really we played explain a wedding how it one time the only hispanics was the groom and his dad oh uh-huh we played all night. At the end of the night, old ladies were crying. Oh, And we're yeah. like, what's going on? They're like, the, mu the music moves you. Yeah. And that's awesome as, a, as an entertainer or as an artist. Right. That is the most uh, gratifying feeling in the world. Right. Is when someone, you know, comes up to you and genuinely says, guys, you know, you, you changed something in me. That's like the best. Right. And that's why we do it. So, yeah. Yeah, after I heard the sounds of uh, the Tejano and, and Norteño accordion, there, there's just no going back to other music. It just all sounds really bland to me, honestly. I I like it. I love it. I'm slightly obsessed. <laughs> That's okay. That's, you know, I'm glad because, like I said before, we were losing our roots. Mm -hmm. um, people need, they, we need that. It's like old country bluegrass music. Right. You need it because that's where everything stems from. Yeah. And so if the new kids, the, the, the upcoming musicians now, don't have those roots, you know, there's nothing to really branch off of except mimic what you're playing. Right. If you go back way back and you hear the fundamentals of how the accordion played, holy moly it's a whole different world than today right so you blend that with the music of today and you have tomorrow's music so it keeps growing right it doesn't get stagnant and it doesn't stay in one spot yeah i i advise you to go to um south texas and listen to conjunto real conjunto mm -hmm. it's making a comeback finally but it was stagnant also for like 20 years now it's starting to come back up because people, their kids are listening to it. And thanks to these bands like Frontera and, and Secreto and all them because they opened the door for our children to hear our music. Right. My kid used to tell me, oh, dad, your music is so boring. Yeah. It doesn't have a, it doesn't have a beat, <laughs> a bump. Well, now you listen to Frontera and it's my music with a brand new mixer. Oh. That's all it is. <laughs> because back then they didn't have mixers. Back yeah. then, you recorded somebody on a little, on a little EP recorder, or a little handheld recorder because you didn't have the, the technology, and so now you get to hear our music with a little ump, and our kids love it. Yeah, and that, I love that. So hopefully it'll keep growing and keep getting bigger, and and it'll stay alive because we need it. Well, if you have one. I don't know, life philosophy that you want to pass on to people who watch this vlog, this video, what would it be? Well, it's the same one I use for everybody. Okay. Some people are going to like you, some people aren't going to like you. You do your thing, you enjoy, you do what you love, and I promise you, things will go good for you. 
keep your head up and keep moving no matter what right no matter what I completely agree with that philosophy yeah just yeah, keep going and no, no nobody can define you but you yeah you know if you let somebody you let somebody into your brain <laughs> that's all I can say you know be yourself and if they don't like you uh, no I better not say that so be yourself. Uh, you can say what you want I don't care be yourself and and always 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 play what you love and do what you love I tell you there's there's millions of people out here mm -hmm. no matter what you play someone's gonna love you right surround yourself with the people who love you other than that guys practice 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 until you hate it yeah and then do it some more and one day we'll be watching you play oh <laughs> well thank you so much for doing this interview i really appreciate it oh thank you ma'am i like i said i my etiquette is terrible i don't know what i'm doing but oh no you're fine hopefully hopefully somebody will listen and uh Thank you for having me, really. I, I really enjoyed it. Oh, well, good. <laughs> I've never been asked about how I started and how long I've been playing and stuff like that. Oh, well. So, thank you. Nice. Well, I'm going to go ahead and shut this down because I am at almost 40 minutes and that that, that makes us the longest interview I've done but then it's not on did great it's not on my lunch hour like, well, <laughs> like you can you can cut is. it and paste it and <laughs> oh no 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 I I'm not gonna cut and paste it I like I like these the spontaneity I think that's that's great and awesome so I appreciate it I because um, for my audience uh, uh, Fabian and Anaya doesn't know me at all, and I was very grateful for to him for thank um, you for having me. I appreciate <laughs> for doing it. this interview. Okay, and I will shut it down.